The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, 1st Chapter, Text Number 9, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 7th of January, 1976, in Nalore, India. Dhrishta Sutabhyan Papam Koroti bhuya vivasa prayaschittam atho katham. Maharaj Bhariki said, One may know that sinful activity is injurious for him because he actually sees that a criminal is punished by the government and rebuked by the people in general. And because he hears from the scriptures and larger scholars that one is thrown into hellish condition in the next life for committing sinful acts, nevertheless, in spite of such knowledge, one is forced to commit sins again and again, even after performing acts of atonement. Therefore, what is the value of such atonement? Kachit nivat tati bhadrat kachit charati tatpuna prayasrittam athu partha manne kunyara saujava. Maharaj Pariki said, sometimes one who is very alert so as not to commit sinful acts, is victimized by sinful life again. I therefore consider this process of repeated sinning and atoning to be useless. It is like bathing of an elephant, for an elephant cleanses itself by taking a full bath, but then thrown dust over its head and body as soon as it returns to the land. In every religious system, there is a process of atonement. In Christian religion, there is a process of atonement called confession. Christian religion, there is a process of atonement called confession. The Parikrit Maharaj is practical politician. He says that he had also experienced that a criminal is punished and again he commits the criminal act. Nowadays we practically see also that government has enacted so many laws against criminality, but criminality is going on without any stoppage. We have got practical experience, as we have explained last night, that in the airport the security checking is going on for everyone, which means that after so much education, every one of us, we are dishonest. This answer is there in this hastra, the shasi bhakti bhagavat akhinchana, Sarvai gunai tattra samasate sura. This means that if one is turned to be a pure devotee, then all the good qualities automatically become manifest in him. Harava bhakta saputo mahad guna mano rathena satu dhavato vai. Whereas a non devotee, he has no good qualification because he is acting on the mental platform. As such, he will be always attracted by material things. In this connection, I shall recite one historical incident from the Puranas. There was a hunter in Prayag. Prayag, you know, in Ayahabad. So, he was hunting in the forest indiscriminately. So Narad Mane was passing through the jungle 
and he was very compassionate to see the animals being half dead and half killed by the hunter. Narad Muni, being Vaishnava, he was very kind to all living entities. So he went to the hunter, whose name was Mrigari. So the Mrigari thought that this saintly person is coming to me for some dear skin. So he said, Sir, don't disturb in my business. If you want dear skin, I shall give you. Please get out of my activities for the present. Narad Muni said that I have not come here to ask for dear skin. I simply ask you that if you want to kill the animals, you kill them total. Why you are killing half? The hunter said, what is the difference between killing whole and killing half? Actually, he had no idea about papa and punna. Actually, those who are animal hunters, they cannot understand what is spiritual life, what is God, what is sinful life, what is pious life. There is a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam quoted by Maharaj Parikhe. Nidvitta tarsai rupagiyo mana bhavau sadha chotra muna vinama ta uttama sloka gunanu vada virajyati vinapasubhna. Unless one is animal hunter, he cannot be away from chanting this Hare Krishna mantra. So Narad Muni said, that if you kill the animal totally, it is less sinful than you kill them up. Narmani said, no, if you kill the animal half, it is more sinful than you kill them whole. The hunter said that from my childhood I have been taught like this by my father. I do not know which is sinful, which is bad. Narmani as Vaishnava advised him that you stop this hunting business and I will give you your livelihood. The hunter, having seen a Vaishnava, was little convinced about spiritual life. Then he said that, sir, if you give me my livelihood, then I can give up my this business. Then Narmani suggested that you and your wife may come with me I shall arrange for your livelihood, you give up this business. So they followed the instruction of Narad Muni, the spiritual master, and they came with Narad Muni and sat down in a place on the bank of the Ganges at Prayag. Narad Muni gave them one tulsi plant, and they sat down near the tulsi plant and he advised that go on chanting Hare Krishna mantra. In the meantime, in the village, it was advertised that the hunter has become a Vaishna. Let us go and see him. So people who are coming to visit, they are bringing. It is a custom still now in India that when you go to see some deity or a Vaishna, sadhu, you bring some one musti, rice or atta, you give them as contribution. So he thought that Narod Muni was sending the atta, rice, dal and everything. So he became confident that he would not die because he is chanting Hare Krishna mantra. In this way he gradually became a perfect Vaishnava because he was chanting under the instruction of the spiritual master and committing no sinful activities. So we being in the disciplic succession of Narad Muni, this Krishna consciousness movement, we are advising the same principle that don't commit sinful activities and chant Hare Krishna mantra. So one day Narad Muni asked his friend Varbhat Muni, I have got a disciple let us go and see Parvatmani, his friend. Yes. 
So I Narad Muni and Parvat Muni was coming to the same hunter who had become now Vaishnava. So he was going to receive his spiritual master by going forward. So while he was going forward towards his spiritual master to receive him, on the way he was jumping in so many places. So Parvatmani asked him that why you are jumping on your way while coming to us. The hunter, the Vaishna, he replied, said, there were so many ants on the ground, therefore I was trying to avoid trampling them. So Parvatmani was surprised that this man was hunting and killing animal half. Now, because he has become a Vaishna, he is not prepared to kill even an ant. So, this is the practical instance that if one becomes devotee of the Lord, all the good qualities manifest in his body. Therefore, Sukadeva Goswami replied to Parikhit Maharaj that you are saying right that simply by atonement, simply by punishment, one cannot become honest. Practically speaking, if you simply enact laws to make people honest, it is impossible to do that. So, Sukhdev Goswami said, Karmana karmani rahara na jhatan tika ishate abhidyad adhikarityat prayasitam vimarsanam. Sukhdev Goswami said, O son of Vedabhyasa, the Sukhdev Goswami, the son of Vedabhyasa, Sukhdev Goswami is the son of Vyasa. He answered, My dear king, since acts meant to neutralize impious action are also pruity, they will not release one from the tendency to act pruitatively. Persons who subject themselves to the rules and regulations of atonement are not at all intelligent. Indeed, they are in the mode of darkness. Unless one is free from the mode of ignorance, trying to counteract one action through another is useless because this will not uproot one's desire. Thus, even though one may superficially seem pious, he will undoubtedly be prone to act impiously. Therefore, real atonement is enlightenment in perfect knowledge, Vedanta, by which one understands the Supreme Absolute Truth. In this verse there is one particular word, vimarsanam. The meaning of this vimarsanam, full knowledge of Vedanta. Then Śrīdhiva Goswami continued to speak, My dear King, if a diseased person eats the pure, uncontaminated food prescribed by a physician, he is gradually cured and the infection of disease can no longer touch him. If one follows the regulative principles of knowledge, he gradually progresses toward liberation from material contamination. Therefore, in the Vedanta Sutra it is said that athatha brahma jiggyasa now this life, human form of life, is simply meant for inquiring about Brahma. At the present moment, especially in this Kali Yuga, nobody is interested in Brahma Jignasa. Therefore he prescribes from scripture, tapasa brahma chadrina samene cha damena cha tagena satta sucha vyam Jamena niyamena va. One should make his life successful by tapasya, austerity, penance. So brahmacharya is one of the items. Tapasya means begin with brahmacharya, celibacy. Here we have given the meaning of tapasya by austerity or voluntary rejection of material enjoyment. 
तपस्या ब्रह्मचर्य देना सो तपस्या I do not like something to do because it is pleasing to me, but for the sake of my advancement of spiritual life, I must have it. This is called tapasya. We prescribe four kinds of regulated principle: no illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication. In the Western countries, these four things are very Ordinary means of life in the Western countries, practically 10 percent population, they are addicted to these sinful activities. So, in our society, anyone who joins, he has to accept these four principles of regulative life: brahmacharya, celibacy, sex, prohibition of sex life. Especially illicit sex life. Unless one is married, no sex life is allowed. That is called brahmacharya, life of celibacy, or accepting one wife only. That's all. Then samena, samena controlling the senses, controlling the mind. Samena domena cha. These two things are required. We should not become the servant of the mind. We should become master of the mind. Tagena, tagena. Therefore, in this hastra, the process of charity is recommended. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is also recommended that jagat dana tapak kriya na ta jam karjam evatak. So, because I have renounced this world, it does not mean I shall give up. The process of performing yoga, dana, and tapasya. It is further stress. Yoga, dana, tapakriya, pavanani, manishina. Even if you think that you are very advanced, still you should not give up these three processes. Means performing yoga, giving in charity, and performing tapasya. One must then control the mind. And senses, give charity, be truthful, clean and non-violent, follow the regulative principle, and regularly chant the holy name of the Lord. Thus, a sober and faithful person who knows the religious principle is temporarily purified of all sins performed with his body, words, and mind. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is also recommended. जुक्ताहार और बिहारस्त, जुक्ता चीज़ता सकर्मना, जुक्ता सपनो, जुक्ता जोगो भवति दुखा। In this way, if we practice yoga, bhakti yoga, then gradually we are elevated to the perfectional stage. Now one may say that if I give up all these things which is habituated to me. There will be some painful condition, so therefore Bhagavad Gita has recommended to tolerate matras for sastu kounti. Now we have to tolerate. This is called tapasya. Even though it is painful for me, it is not at all painful. But those who are trying to practice in the beginning, it may be painful. So Bhagwan Krishna is advising. That even it is painful, you must do it and and tolerate it. So, matras parshastu konte asito sno sukhudukhada. The example is given. That's like we suffer sometimes in scorching heat and very pinching and chilly cold, but we tolerate and do our business. Sometimes to cure our disease. Say, for example, we were, we have to swallow very bitter quinine pills. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, considering the people in general of this age, Kaliju, he knew that people will not be able to even tolerate such little pain for advancing in spiritual life. So. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
that for recommended that harer nama harer nama harer nama eva kevalam kalo nasteva 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 kathiran natha very difficult in this age to follow the principles of brahmacharya as it is recommended tapasa brahmacharya samena damena ba that for sukhdev goswami also advising that if one is unable to follow the regulative principles then he says ke bolaya ke chit ke bolaya bhaktya vasudev parayana agham sundanti kasnena niharam vyobhas kara the translation is only a rare person who has adopted complete analyzed devotional service to krishna can uproot the weeds of sinful action with no possibility that they will revive kevalaya bhakta simply he can do this simply by discharging devotional service just as the sun can immediately dissipate fog by its rays so by other processes temporarily it can be seized but actually from the root of the cause it is not possible to get it out in the previous verse sukhdev goshami gave the example that the dried leaves of creepers beneath the bamboo tree may be completely burned to ashes by a fire although the creepers may sprout again because the root is still in the ground you have seen practically on the field the grass is dried up and sometimes fire is set and it becomes all burned into ashes but as soon as there is any season again they sprout and become green you may perform the religious ritualistic ceremonies but if your heart is not clean simply by performing these ritualistic ceremonies in not with your heart so we have got two desires pious desire or impious desire so either you become a uh, desire of soft doing pious thing or you desire of soft doing impious thing the sufferings of this material world will continue the said in the bhagavad gita urdhanga chanti sattva stha madhye tishtanti rajasa jagannath guna vittishta adhogachanti tamasa so by pious activities you can be elevated to the higher planetary system in the heavenly planet but that does not mean completion of your suffering of the material world krishna has said that for abramba bhuvana lokan punaravartina in you are promoted to the brahma loka where the standard of living duration of life is very very big still you cannot avoid that this material pains and pleasure because after finishing your resultant action of past activities you will have to come back again in this lower planetary system kine punne puno matte lokam visanti after the resultant action of past activities finish you are again dragged within this lower planetary system therefore unless you take to the devotional path bhakti because krishna says bhaktama abhijanati java andasyami tattva if you want to understand god krishna then you have to take the only path bhaktya bhakti or devotional service so we shall discuss further tomorrow about this bhakti yoga and today let us end here thank you very much the following is a class on the shrimad bhagavatam 6 canto 1st chapter text number 11 given by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad recorded on may 12 1976 in honolulu hawaii uh, the next step 
next day means to become culture. First of all, price chitta. You have done this wrong, you should be punished. But this punishment will not rectify him. And that is practical. There are so many rules and regular punishment. In our common cases, every day and the police is giving a ticket to the motor driver, it's still the same thing. <coughs> so, to keep oneself in darkness and make rules and regulations will not help. Just like your government has admitted that they have spent millions of dollars, they could not stop the intoxication habit of That's a fact. But in our Krishna consciousness movement, one who joins, he gives away. That's a fact. What is the difference? The difference is that uh, to stop one kind of karma by karma is not help. Therefore it says, karmana karma niraha. One kind of activity is criminality and one kind of activity just to punish him. This is not stop criminality. This is the real. Uh, he uh, must be in knowledge, cultivation of knowledge. He must come to the senses that I am uh, suffering. Every time I commit some criminality, I am punished. This is not very uh, palatable. So why I cannot stop? This, this is the beginning of human life. Uh, that unless you come to this knowledge, athāta brahma this is called brahma so that is possible in the human form of life. A dog cannot. A dog comes within your room and you drive him away, you punish him, and he stays with some pleasing uh, talk. So, therefore, Parikitma Sukhdev Goswami suggests that we have to make him free from the avidya, ignorance. That is Krishna consciousness. Everyone is under the spell of Maya, puna puna. Bhutya bhutya praliyate, it is going on. But we do not inquire that why I am repeatedly accepting the cycle of birth and death. That is obvious. They are rather supporting. Suppose if I become dog, what is wrong here? They say, what is wrong here? So this means avidya. Ignorance. So, for eradicating ignorance from life, it requires culture, cultivation. Uh, that is suggested in the next verse. Nasnata pottham ivanyam badhaya avivavantihi even Nyamakri Rajan Sanai Chimaya Kalpati. That's like if you go to the physician and the physician is giving medicine and he's taking he's taking the medicine and a cure again he is affected with the disease again by so why it is happening? It is happening because he does not follow the rules and regulations given by the physician. That position. Uh, the physician, as soon as you go to a physician, you have to accept something 
do not and something do. That is called regulated. Without regulated principle, you cannot correct yourself. So that regulated principle also cannot stay if you are not a devotee. This is the gradual process. Simply, if I say follow the rules and regulation, it will not stay uh, unless you become a devotee. Uh, that is the test of devotional service of Krishna consciousness. Uh, because it is so powerful, devotional service, that as soon as you become a devotee, <coughs> gradually, immediately, all the good qualities of your original position. Uh, good qualities means you are part and parcel of God. So God is good, so you are also good. Otherwise, how can I be part and parcel of God? Uh, if God is gold, then I am gold. So why I become iron? Uh, I am not iron, but I am covered with dirty things, I look like that. This is it. Actually, I'm not Ayra. I'm good, because I'm part and parcel of God. So God is good, then I am good. So, because I am covered by the material dirty things, I look like not good. So this is the test. As soon as you become God concept, your original or good quality will manifest. Automatically. The Shasti Bhakti Bhagavati Akimchana Sarvai Gunai Tatra Samasati Sura Rava Bhakta Sakuto Mahatuguna Mano Rakena Asatu Dhava Sarvai. Then, one who has got unflinching faith goes to the law. The Shasti Bhakti Bhagavati Akimchana without any motive. Uh, then the, all the good qualities of God will manifest in Him uh, very soon. Kipram Bhavati Dhanmata Tasmat Chanti Nivatsi Kauti Apadriyani Hi Nami Bhakta Pranasati Avite Sudurachara Bhajati Mamananabha Sadhuri Vasana These things are there. The devotion of Sadhuri is so nice. He would simply take to devotional salary, then all good qualities will come. You don't have to educate him to send some reformatory school or this or that. That will be explained. The devotional salary, Krishna consciousness is so nice. If you simply take to Krishna consciousness, that all you are, because originally you are good, you have become bad on account of the material action. Devotion means uh, to be purified. This is a purificatory process from material content. Sarvapādhi vinirmuktam tatparatena nirmalam. If you think vimarsana, if you think little, so that uh, I am thinking of American or Indian. They are my American or Indian. Uh, this is Upadhi, daily nature. Uh, by accident or some or other, I got this body in America, therefore I am American. But next, next time, I may not uh, take the American body. Uh, I may take another Chinese body or something else. So one has to understand that I am neither American, neither Chinese, nor Indian, nor white, nor black. Aham Brahma is me. He is so part and parcel of God. That is knowledge. You have to come to that. That is Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasuda Kirtanatma. Samasarveshu Bhuteshi Bhagavati Ravati Pala. So, 
This Krishna consciousness movement is to purify the daily And so long we are in the darkness of this designation. And I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. And that is thing always. Suppose the thief, he is thinking that if I do not steal, I cannot exist. I die. So I cannot stop stealing, I must go. So this is ignorant. But if he thinks over that the cats and dogs and the birds and bees, they are very nicely eating, and they are not stealing anyone's, and whatever he gets by the grace of God, he is happy. This is God. Devar. Devar. Isara Sumidam Sadmam. Everything God's property. And we are all part and parcel sons of God. So the property is for us. It is not for others. Just like father's property is meant for the sons and young. That's a fact. So if other sons without any labor, without any endeavor, they can get that food, why I am stealing? This is not it. This is not why is I stay? There is a lot food. But because I haven't got this knowledge that God is the proprietor, I am his part and parcel son, so he has provided food for the elephant who eats at a time, and for kilos, he can eat, and I eat only, say, half a pound, I cannot eat. This is not. Why shall I stay? Uh, I shall defend that. Uh, this is not. Uh, so this is Krishna consciousness. I am part and parcel of Krishna. I am God's partner. Why shall I stay? Uh, there are so many, out of eight million four hundred thousand forms of life, eight million forms of life and less than the human being. Human being only four hundred thousand. Out of that, civilized men very few. Out of that, Americans are very few, Indians are very few. So, if so many, eight million, three hundred thousand pounds of life they can get without stealing, why shall I steal? This is not. Prayas Chittam As soon as he becomes in quite perfect knowledge, then whole problem solved. So this is the instruction of some other Arbatam. If we take seriously, then there is no problem. Otherwise the problems will go on and the so called rascal scientists will give us blood that we are making solution of all problems. It is never solved, it will never be and solved in the future also unless we take to Krishna consciousness. That is a fact. If you like and take it, other is supplied. Thank you very much. Next is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, 1st Chapter, Text Number 12, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on October 13, 1976, in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh. Today Goswami is explaining how to become perfect gentleman, that is cultured. If we do not accept education, culture, then what is the difference between a man and dog? There is no difference. So, the basic civilization means everything under rules and regulations. That is basic civilization. Animal cannot be brought under rules and regulations. That is not possible. Therefore, that is the speciality of human society that the more 
So one society follows the rules and regulations, he is to be considered civilized. Just like throughout the whole history, there are civilization, alien civilization. Alien and non-alien. What is different? Alien means progress. Uh, one who is progressing toward the perfection of life, they are called aliens. And those who are deviating toward animal propensity, they are not aliens. This is the alien culture. So Krishna, when found or Joe, that he was in the battlefield, and Krishna himself is guiding him and becoming the chariot driver, and he saw that was doing really decline fight, he became surprised. So he chastises Kutasti Kasmaraminam Bishami Samapasitam on Arjajustam. Alien, Arya, Arya. So this is not for a gentleman business. You are uh, behaving like non alien non alien so this is the difference between culture and non culture. That there is a Bengali proverb that one girl must to dance on the stage. So in Indian civilization, the girls or the women, they cover their head, head uh, from superior. Uh, so last day was the Bhumta. He, he, has, he has gone to dance on the stage and she is pulling on the he. Now, when the uh, opportunity appeared to become a household uh, wife, uh, you have come to dance. So similarly, Arjuna was chastised that you have come to fight and now you are becoming very non-violent, atheist. So this is allowed. You have to do your duty in proper place. That is Arya. That is Arya. Arya Samad means one who knows his duty, how to do it, in proper time. The Chatriya, his duty uh, is to fight, to defend from the hands of the enemy. So he is declining to fight. So he is just fighting, non alien. Uh, you are not alien. <coughs> so, yeah, for the Guru Sahib say, my dear king, the diseased person eats the pure, uncontaminated food prescribed by a physician. He is gradually cured. And the infection of disease can no longer touch him. Similarly, if one follows the regulative principles of knowledge, he gradually progresses toward liberation from material contamination. This is it. Translation of the uh, uh, means good food stuff, uh, not anything I can eat. That is the business of the hogs and dogs. They uh, say hogs have no discrimination, anything up to stew, they give me to eat. That is not human civilization. Although it is the law of nature that 
पहुंचानी सहस्ताना वेजिटेबल्स और एनिमल्स हु हैज नो हैंड इस बाय ऑर्डिनरी एनिमल्स दे हैव बट फोर लेग्स नो हैंड तो दिस फोर लेगेड एनिमल इज द फूड फॉर द टू लेगेड आस्तानी सहस्ता एंड सिविलाइज मैन मीन टू लेगेड एनिमल्स देर एनिमल्स बट टू लेग देर आर फोर लेगेड एनिमल्स देर आर टू लेग आस्तानी सहस्ताना और बदानी चतुष्पदा एंड लिविंग एंटिटीज टू हैव नो लेग देर टाइम द वेजिटेबल ग्रास प्लांट ट्रीज They are no leg. They cannot move, but they are living entity. They are food for chosen for the for the animals who have got four legs. Ahastani, sahastana, opdani, chosen for the for the mahda zatso and the weak is food for the strong. For the jivo jivo so jivo. This is the law of nature. That one life is meant for maintaining another life. That is why. So sometimes they put forward this argument that uh, you are also eating vegetables. They are not right. Why you object that non-vegetarians are eating? Four-legged animals. Uh, no, we are not going to infringe to the laws of nature. That is not our business. Uh, you can eat four-legged animals because you are also animal. But when we speak of civilized animal, civilized not animal, that is human. So long one is not civilized, be that, and civilization begins when one understands that he is not this boy. That is the beginning of civilization. Just shaku buddhi kuna pi tidhatu ke. So long one is in ignorance, the bodily concept of life. He is an When one knows that I am not this body, and Aham Brahmasmi, then civilization begins. So here it is recommended that unless we follow the rules and regulations, then there is no possibility of curing or making disease. The whole process is: we are in material disease. Otherwise, we are as good as Krishna. But because we are material disease, we are uh, in the difficult position of uh, birth, death, old age, and disease. Krishna says, "This is real problem." जन्मृत्यु के आप मैं दुख वांट फ्रॉम दिस डिजीज देन यू हैव टू फॉलो रूल्स जस्ट लाइक ए पेशेंट इफ यू वांट टू बी क्योर फ्रॉम दिस डिजीज ही हैज टू फॉलो द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन प्रिस्क्राइब बाय द फिजिशियन देर फॉर लॉ रिलीजन वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर They are all meant for human being, not for the cats and dogs. In ordinary law, they are meant for human being. Uh, it's like on the street; it is tipped to the right. So this is for the human being. The cats and dogs goes from right to the left or wrong. They are not prostitutes. The law is meant for the human. The human being 
does not follow rules and regulative principle, law, that is error. So civilized man to raise oneself from the animal status of life to the human status. That means rules and we have to follow the rules and regulations. That is compulsory. That is human. The Chaitanya Chaitamita is fine, is bad. Anadi Mahimma Ji Krishna Bhuri Gela. Atay Krishna Ved Purana Kodila. But what is? But our disease is that we have forgotten God. We, more we are forgetful about God, the more we are animal. And the more we become advanced in understanding God, Krishna consciousness, then we will be. And if we are more advanced, then we are devota, demigods. And when we more advanced, then we become free for going back to home, back to God. This is the cause. So, real civilization is how to go back to home, back to but they do not do it. Nati Vidu, uh, the materialistic person, they do not know. Uh, therefore, there must be organization in institution to teach the human society how to go back to home, back to home. That is real civilization. Uh, otherwise, cats and dogs, they are all sleeping, sleeping, matching, getting children and die. That is not human civilization. And the next verse we'll find that his human civilization can be attained. First thing is Kathin Bhat Tapusha by Austerity. Tapusha Adana Chadina Samina Chadamina Chad. Tagina Satta Sautrabhya Javena niyamena bhā. Dīha bhāg, dīha bhāg ud vijana dhīra dharma gya sudhya nita kipanti agham mahadapi venu gurma vibhāg. These are the different states how uh, one uh, person can become civilized. So first thing is Tapusha. Tapusha Brahma Chakya. Austrians. Therefore the Vedic civilization, the children, they are taught from the very beginning, Brahma Chakya. Tamasaha Brahmacharya, a small boy, five years old boy, uh, that is Guru Kule. Brahmachari Guru Kule, Basandanta Guru Rikitam. This is the way of life to teach the Brahmacharya. Uh, Brahmacharya is serious to restrain from sex life. That is Brahmacharya. So this is the beginning of civilization, that unlimited, unrestricted sex life, like hogs and dogs, that is not civilization. Civilization is the first of all to learn how to observe uh, celibacy, to come to the point, no sex life, uh, very first civilization, no sex life. Therefore, in the Vedic civilization, we find the human society is divided into four orders and four 
spiritual love, material and spiritual. Varnasam, Varnasam, Brahman, Khatri, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanapastha, Sagnasam. The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, 1st Chapter, Text Number 15, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 8th of January, 1976, in Nellore, India. Nihara <laughs> We are discussing this verb that somebody, Kechi, not all, Kechi, somebody simply by acting devotional service, uh, devotional service to Vasudev, he immediately finishes all reaction of sinful life. Simply by devotional service and to the Vasudev, one can become free from all sinful reaction of life. Bhakta means by devotional service, there are nine different processes and the same, but according to our capacity, they are divided into nine processes. So it begins with Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padu Srivanam Archanam Bandanam Dasam Sakham Matam. Beginning with Savanam, hearing. Nine processes are hearing, chanting, then worshipping, serving, then offering everything. In this way, there are nine different ways. The beginning is hearing. Hearing just you all, ladies, gentlemen, you have come here to hear. Then, hearing, if your hearing is perfect, then kirtanam means describing or preaching. So, our, this movement, Krishna consciousness movement, we are first giving chance to the people in general for hearing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was talking with Ramananda Rai, he especially gave stress on this point of hearing. If you hear that the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is never conquered by anyone, but a devotee who is hearing about him, he can conquer over him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, he quoted from Bhagavatam, any devotee or bona fide preacher, he does not manufacture anything, he simply follows the previous Mahaja. He said, Gane prayasam udapal. One should not try to speculate to understand the supreme truth. So, we should give up this habit of speculating to understand God. One should become submissive. Gane prayasam udapasa namantai. Very submissive to hear from the right person. So, Hearing is so important, therefore our all Vedic literature uh, is called Shruti. So, the subject matter which is beyond our sense perception, avana manasa gosha, that cannot be understood by using our imperfect senses. Now the question is, from whom to hear? So, in this hasta it is said, Sanama Gurita. So you have to hear from realized saintly person. It is said in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidhi Pranipatena Puriprasnena Svevaya 
उपदेक्षति तद ज्ञानम ज्ञानिना तत्व दर्शन मी हैव टू हियर फ्रॉम ए पर्सन हु हैज सीन और हु हैज अंडरस्टूड द एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ एंड हु इज सदगुरु ही मस्ट बी ए डिवोटी ऑफ द लॉ सो इट इज स्टेटेड इन द शास्त्र दैट सत्कर्म निपुण विप्र मंत्र तंत्र विशारद अवैश्रम गुरु न शस्या सात सपथ गुरु इट इज से दैट ए ब्राह्मण हु इज वेरी वेल एक्सपर्ट इन द ब्रामेरिकल एक्टिविटीज एंड मंत्र तंत्र विशारद नो ऑल द वेदिक मंत्र बट इफ ही इज नॉट ए वैष्णव he cannot become guru but a person born in a family of dog eater sapacha he can become guru if he has become vaishnava sanatan goshami one of the big acharyas of gauriya sampradaya he has also said that all vaishnava guru na sasya so he said That a person, Bhuta Hari Kathamritam, Sabanam na Kattam, Bam, Avishnava Mukhadgina, Bhuta Hari Kathamritam, Sabanam na Kattam. He says that you do not try to hear from a person who is Avishnava, Hari Kathamritam. The Hari Katha, the message of Krishna, like Bhagavad Gita. and other small bag you should not hear from a person who is not a vaishnava in the bhagavat also it is said satam prasangat mam bija sangvida bhavanti ritkanna rasayana katha when we hear from sad vyakti or vaishnava that we get real effect so if one argues that purikatha is pure in a avishnava speaks what is the harm there the sanatan goshami said in connection with this that savanam na kattamam sat pachistu payo jatha just like milk it is very nice food but if it is touched with the leaves of a snake it becomes poisonous therefore it is concluded that we have to hear the transcendental message of krishna from a realized soul a devotee so this hearing process is recommended that he should hear from a realized person who is sadachar sampanna vaishnava so who is a bhakta because you have to learn from a bhakta so who is a bhakta that is also described so it is stated in the shastras and the goshami as sarvopadhi dinin muktam tat parate na nirmala anyone who has no more designation and he is pure from material contamination upadhi means so long we think that i am this body that means i am decorated with this upadhi so long we think that i am indian i am american i am brahmana i am hindu i am muslim we are decorated with upadhi upadhi sunna is described in the vedas when one understand aham brahmasmi so there are two brahma para brahma and ordinary brahma para brahma is the supreme vibhu and ordinary brahma they are anu para brahma is all pervading and brahma is not all pervading so krishna says in the bhagavad gita that khetram gancha bhi mang vidhi sarva khetre subhar khetra khetra gahani was describing khetra means this body 
and Khetra God means the soul who knows about this body. So there are two Khetra God. One Khetra God is the jiva, soul, and another Khetra God is Paramatma, Bhagavan. Clearly distinguished by Krishna that Khetra should be manavit. You are not only Khetranga. The jiva soul is Khetranga, he knows. It's like you know, I know. It is my body. So there are two Khetranga. One Khetranga I am. Just like I know this is my body. You know this is your body. But I do not know what is going on in your body. You do not know what is going on in my body. Therefore Krishna said, Cha eva chetragam cha api manvinti. Not only you are chetragma, I am also chetragma because I am parabrahma or supersho. And what is the difference between these two chetragma? The difference is that one chetragma knows about his own body, but the super chetragma, he knows everyone's body. So in this way, if we understand our position that Krishna or the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the great and we are small, that is perfect knowledge. Therefore Krishna commands Sarvadharma and Paritajya Mamekam Sarvamal as the master commands the servant that what rascal you are doing, what I say you do it. There are two living entities, one the superior who orders and the other inferior who carries out the order. This is further explained in the fifteenth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Sarvasya chahaṁ ridhisanne vishtya matta smriti jñāna mapuhanan. He says, Lord Krishna says, that I am situated in everyone's heart. I am giving order, matta. Smriti jnana. And then the jivatma gets knowledge and carries it out. So when one is perfectly in knowledge of khetra, khetraga, uh, then his devotional life begins. This understanding the, of the relationship between God and ourselves is more clearly explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he says, Jiveri Sarupai Nitya Krishna Das. Our real identity is that we are eternally servant of God. This understanding, pure understanding, is called mukti. When we understand that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is my eternal master and I am eternal servant of Him, that is called mukti. The mukti definition is given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mukti hitya annatha rupam sarupena avasthiti. Mukti means when we give up our wrong ideas and we stay in our real identification, that is called mukti. So a bhakta who understands clearly that I am eternal servant of God, and God is my eternal master. This very understanding means mukti. If I wrongly think that I am something of this material world, or I am God myself, these are misunderstandings. There is no question of mukti. Here the word is kechit kevalaya, somewhat. The purpose is, that most people, they are either karmis or gyanis. Karmis or gyanis. Karmis means those who are working very hard day and night for sense gratification. And gyanis means after being frustrated in such activities, he tries to give up this world, brahma sattva jagan This is not gyan that brahma sattva jagan 
ही ब्रह्मा ही सत्ता देन जगत इज ऑल्सो सत्ता ज्ञान मीन्स टू नो रियल फैक्ट द रियल फैक्ट इज दैट इज ब्रह्मा ही सत्ता एनीथिंग विच इज इमेनेटेड फ्रॉम ब्रह्म दैट इज ऑल्सो सत्ता इन द वेदांत सूत्र इट बिगिन्स लाइक दिस अथात ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा नाव वी हैव टू एन्क्वायर अबाउट ब्रह्म सो अबाउट दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन ब्रह्म जत उमा भूता नहीं जाते एंड वेदांत सूत्र इट इज से जन्मादर्श जता एवरीथिंग विच इज मैनेटिंग फ्रॉम ए पर्टिकुलर शो दैट इज ब्रह्म सो वट इज दैट ओरिजिनल सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग दैट इज एक्सप्लेन इन दी भगवद गीता कृष्ण से अहम सर्वस्व प्रभव फ्रॉम मी एवरीथिंग इज इमेनिटी देर फॉर कृष्ण इज परम ब्रह्म दैट फॉर द कंक्लूशन इज दैट इफ यू कम टू दी प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ भक्ति देन ऑटोमेटिकली यू बिकम लिबरेटेड so it is also confirmed in the bhagavad gita man ka bhari chari ni bhakti jogi na jase hote sagunan samotita etan brahma hua in order to become mukta a brahma platform one has to render an allied service to the supreme lord krishna so here it is said ke chit ke bole a bhakta ke chit somebody not the kormis not the ganesh not the yogis can execute devotional service the kormis it is openly known that they want to enjoy they want something similarly ganesh they want to become one with the supreme that is also wanting something the yogis also they all want something some mystic power So Kormis, Ganis, Yogis, all of them wanting something. The subject matter of want may be different, but a bhakta he does not want anything. He simply wants to be engaged in carrying out the orders of the supreme law. But such person is very very rare. Of many millions of Kormis. One may be gani, and out of many millions of gani, one may become mukta, and out of many many millions of mukta, one may become a bhakta. Therefore, Krishna says, "Manusalam sahasreshu kastin jagati siddha." Siddha means to become perfect gani or perfect yogi. And Jagatava be Siddhala, and amongst the Siddha, those who have got perfection in Jnana and Yoga, Kasti Veti Bam Tattata. Some of them may, not some of them, maybe someone is able to understand me. Therefore, in this verse, it is clearly said, Kesi, the same thing, Kasti Veti Bam Tattata, to become a Bhakta. Is not so easy. Therefore, he says, "Kechi, somebody, some rare personality may become a bhakta." So, kechi ke bolay a bhakta. Ke bolay a. Ke bolay a means analyzed, pure. Ke bolay a bhakti means shuddha bhakti, analyzed bhakti. Otherwise, bhakti is sometimes mixed with jnana and sometimes mixed with yoga, mixed with karma. Because Kormis, Ganesh, and Yogis, they have got some desire to be fulfilled. The Kormis, they want to be elevated to the heavenly planet. The Ganesh, they want to become one with the supreme Lord, and the Yogis, they want some power to exhibit so that they may be honored as God. Yoga, mystic power. अनिमाल घिवा सिद्धि बट भक्ति मीन्स वन मस्ट बी फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल दिस डिजायर्स डेफ फ्रील रूप गोस्वामी 
is the definition of bhakti, anna-vilāsita sunnam, without any other desire. Other means bhakti, bhakti, siddhi. To enjoy this material world, or to become one with the God, or to get some mystic power. So, the bhakti means anna-vilāsita sunnam, no karmis desire, no gyanish desire, no yogis desire. So, anna-vilāsita sunnam gyana karma anabhritam. So, one should be cleansed from the desires of gyana karma yoga. He should be desireless. So, these are all material desires. So, when one gives up this material desire, then he is desireless. But one cannot be desireless, that is not possible. Then he is dead and gone. So desirelessness means no material desire. So we cannot be desireless, but desirelessness means no bhukti, no yogic siddhi, neither oneness, monism, to march into the supreme. These are all material desires. So bhakti means the anugulena krishna anusilanam bhakti uttama. That is first class bhakti when we are ready to serve Krishna as He orders. So, to become ready to serve Krishna is desirelessness. Otherwise, a living entity, a living being cannot be desireless. So this Krishna consciousness movement is teaching how to become desirous to serve Krishna. This teaching in the instruction we find in the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjun says, Kurise Vachanantava, I shall execute what you order me. Te Vachanantava, I shall execute any order which you order me. Arjun was a warrior, soldier. Before his hearing Bhagavad Gita, he was a soldier. And after hearing Bhagavad Gita, he remained a soldier. But in the beginning of the fight, he was not willing to fight with his brothers. Although Krishna was speaking to him that you fight, he was declining. This is the stage of abhakva or non devotee Although mundane person will very much be pleased that Arjuna was not willing to fight, he is non-violent. But Krishna was not accepting. So fighting is not a good business. So Arjuna was declining to fight. It was good from the worldly point of view. After hearing Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna inquired from Arjuna, what you have decided? Arjuna replied, Nasta moha sati labja karishthe vachanam tava. Now I am quite in knowledge. I shall execute your order. This is mukti. When we are prepared to execute the order of Krishna, that is the platform of mukti. Therefore, it is said, Kechit Kivulaya Bhaktya Vasudeva Parayana. Simply by executing the order of Vasudev, one becomes mukta. Just like master and servant. If the servant executes the order of the master, he is faultless. If the servant declines to execute the order of the master, however qualified he may be, he is useless. So that's why it is said, Kivalaya Bhakta, without any contamination, simply ready to execute the order of Krishna or Vasudeva. That's what is called Vasudeva Parayana. That's why it is in the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed. Bhavanam Janmanavanti Gyanavan Man Prabhupadati. After many, many births of struggle, when one is actually Gyanava, wise, he surrenders unto me. So, either you become Kormi, Gyanvi, or Yogi, you are not Mukta. Mukta means I have already defined. Mukti Hitya Arnatharupam Sarupina Vastiti. When you stay, in your own original position, to execute the order of Krishna, that is mukti. So, in the previous verses, the mode of progress 
is these things have to be executed. But here in these verses, simply if you become a pure devotee, then it is to be understood that we have already executed tapasādhamma, chanda, samādhamma, everything. So as soon as you surrender to Krishna, sarva dharma and paritya mami kaṁsaṁ, ahamukva sarva pāpim bhaumakkaṣa, that our miserable condition of life is due to our material attraction or papa, impious activities. Here it is confirmed that kevala abhatya agham dhunnanti kasmena. Totally, you can kill all the action of sinful activities. And a very good example is given here. Nihara meva bhaskara. Nihara means fall. In the fall, you cannot see what is there in your form. But as soon as there is sunrise, immediately fog is dissipated. Therefore, Bhavnam Jambanamanti Gyanavan Maam Prabhadvate Vasudevas Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudhirgama. When we understand that Vasudev is the supreme Samahatma, then we become the great Mahatma. So, if you accept Krishna consciousness, then life of ignorance will finish and you come to the light and become liberated. If you come to Krishna consciousness, the light is there, therefore the darkness of life is dissipated. Therefore it is said, Arajita Jodi Hari Kip. If you have learned how to worship Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then there is no more use of your tapasya. Ajita Jadi Hari Sabhasatata Kim. And if you cannot understand Hari, then what is the use of your tapasya? Antad Vahi Jadi Hari Sabhasatata Kim. If you can see Hari, Krishna, within yourself and outside yourself, then what is the use of tapasya? Nantad Vahi, Antad Vahi Jadi Hari Sabhasatata Kim. And if you have not learned to see, Krishna, Hari, within yourself and outside, then what is the use of your tapasya? So, this moment is giving the chance to everyone. It doesn't mean for any particular nation, particular country, or particular person. For everyone, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, all over the world. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, all over the world, in every village and every town, this message will be spread, and that is being done. So, it is a great moment. I request you all to join wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.